Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Where do we, where do we want to jump in here? I'm down to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. I'm the old man in here. You know, I'm like 58 years old. <laughs> so, um, you know, and you're all, you're all young people. What's what's on your minds? What's bothering you guys the most? So can we address the gun snob? Okay. Thing? All right. Ooh. All right. All right. I like that. <laughs> um, I definitely think that um there is a little bit of the gun snob thing that goes on mm-hmm. um when you have people. Just on social media, Mm -hmm. it's like certain firearms are not like good enough, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and even with me becoming a beginner, I have so many people that ask me, oh, like, like, what's your gun? Like, what do you carry? And then when I like tell them, Mm -hmm. it's like like, people are disappointed because like I dress like this, okay? Mm -hmm. This is like a little summer cute little dress throw on dress Mm -hmm. people want me to be like walking around with a big old like clunker like i'm thinking Mm -hmm. the salesperson or the person that i'm working with Mm -hmm. they're usually going to tell you get something that fits your hands Mm -hmm. you want to make sure it's comfortable you want to make sure you like the trigger pull Mm -hmm. that seems to all go out of the out of the window as soon as you get on social media and people be like like that, like that's it. Like that's what you carry. Mm-hmm. I'm like it still shoots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, do you want to give us specifics, or I mean, do you do you have like just one gun that you carry all the time? Do you do you change um, it depend on how much clothing you have on, or? Well, or okay. Wearing? So, the first firearm that I purchased was a a Smith a Smith and Wesson. A, a no. It's like a 380. I'm mm-hmm. trying to. No, it was a bodyguard. Bodyguard, mm-hmm. okay. 380. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is like nice. This is like my first <laughs> part on. It's okay to have on, you know, every day. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know. There's nothing wrong with the. I don't, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. Right. Yeah. It's something small, mm-hmm. but like every time I tell a guy that it's old. Oh, yeah. You don't have a nine millimeter. You don't have a, 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 a okay. Why are you carrying with the police carry? <laughs> Get you a Glock seventeen. Get you a Glock nineteen. Like, eh. Maybe yeah. for home protection, you know. But how realistic is that for me? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's another thing, and that's where my other conversations come in with women, because it's this idea that oh, this is the gun or it, this is the better thing. And I'm like, you have to figure out like what's appropriate and mm-hmm. works for you. It's a lot of things to measure that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Devin, do you have a, do you, uh, do you have a comment on this? Do you feel like this, the same kind of uh, pressures out there in the community when it comes to uh, what gun you own or carry or whatever? I mean, that, that's going to happen in waves. Like, whatever, like, right now, what's the big hype? CZs? CZs are, like, the top-of-the-line snob gun that everybody's hyped yeah. about. But I'm not paying $2,500 for a gun. I'll tell anybody yeah. that, like, straight mm-hmm. to their face. Yeah. Does CZ um, have a super compact um, or ultra compact uh, uh, carry uh, gun? Does they have CZ? a regular compact. I don't think yeah, it's I think ultra they have, compact, like, uh, but... what is it, like, the P507? Something. I don't okay. know. Okay. Either way, yeah, yeah they, Rhonda, they probably I, do because yeah. I think I saw Mac or someone yeah. do something on it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that's gonna happen. Like, like I've never heard anything bad really about a bodyguard being somebody's first gun. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Wow. It's just yeah, that's just what's gonna happen. It's honestly yeah. a bunch of nerds that get new technology and want to just talk about the old stuff that they probably still have somewhere. Yeah, like mm-hmm. they didn't buy it. But yeah, yeah, that's my input. I agree with Don't that. Worry about Yep. Yeah. Go ahead, Rolando. Did you want to? Oh, no. I mean, look, and especially, look, you live in the South. This is something that a lot of people don't understand. It's so humid down here. I go everywhere. Look, <laughs> I carry a lot of times in the summer. I carry an LCP, too. It's a 380. Mm-hmm. 
You know, mm -hmm. I, I for some reason I shoot the I shoot the hell out of it. I don't know why because there are bigger guns that I shoot that I shoot much worse than this pistol, mm -hmm. but I shoot it pretty well. And and then there are times when I carry a PCC, you know, like a sub gun or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So it really just comes down to what you've got. And then yeah. other times you have a regular a, a regular full size pistol. Yeah. So you know, it depends on it just this just depends on the scenario that you're in. Um, okay, so I think. If you want to, if you, this is a good subject, I'm going to mm -hmm. say that Rhonda, there's a couple of things involved here, a couple of things involved, right? Because it depends on who it is on how we're dealing with this. So us, the three of us as dudes, if we're talking to other dudes about the gun, I think, you know, it's a different dynamic than when you, as a, as a woman, you're talking to a dude about the gun or, ver, or versus if you're talking to women about it, right? Because guys always want to get in there, you know, they always want to look big and tough and all that kind of thing. Right. Yeah, we, we always get that twisted. I think, I don't know if we could just put that on it being a gun community thing, right? It's cars too. Yeah. Cars are the same. Yeah. Cars are just as bad, I think. Yeah, guys, we do that with pretty much yeah. everything, I think. Yeah anything yeah we get dogs out the cars shoes yeah yep. you know anything yeah and we're always trying to like uh i'm gonna say we're always trying to show off you know so depending that's really a dynamic situation i think based on who you're um who you're talking to and the way that i look at this thing is like um whatever it is that you feel comfortable or you feel like you can afford and gets you into this thing that's what you need to do and even there's people who don't carry, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so let's start from there. Even someone who doesn't carry, if they're telling me that they don't carry, the way I look at it is like, I should be trying to help that person. So if they're telling me they don't carry, my first thing should be like, well, okay, how come you don't carry? Do you feel uncomfortable? You know, what is it? And then mm -hmm. try to figure out like, how can I help that person out if they're looking for that help? And then when it comes to the guns, I mean, you know, you're, you should just, there's always going to be someone that thinks that they're better. If you have a, if you have a Glock, well, first of all, let's start with like high point. You know, mm -hmm. if you have a high point, someone's going to think that's terrible. Yeah. But if that's what you can afford, that's what you got. Okay. Yeah. Right. Then if you, I don't know, if we go up from there, let's go into like the Glock category. There's going to be someone like, oh, you need to need a sick. Taurus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Taurus. Yeah. Yeah. Taurus. There's always going to be levels of this, mm -hmm. but I think everyone has their progression, their level, what they could afford. And, you know, you just need to find what you're comfortable with. But we can't, we just can't resist it as human beings trying to make other people into us. Yeah. Right. You know? Yep. And I think women have like specific. Uh, so I know as a guy, I'm wearing very baggy stuff. I'm a big dude. So um, I have what I like to call uh, tactical fat. Yeah, it helps me <laughs> to hide things, you know, versus the skinny people. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> you know, th so for me, I have that right, so I can do certain things, you know. And then there's some people who are skinny. Some people wear skinny jeans. Even the dudes nowadays, you know, wearing the like super skinny jeans. So it all depends on how are you exactly gonna uh, conceal this thing on your body, and you have to figure out what works for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try to jump into this. Most people, uh, Kathleen Music Lover says, most people can afford a decent pistol. So, uh, and she, I guess she's saying, like, she's talking about High Point, and she says you can save more money, you know. Um, yeah. What do High Point uh, what if you, mm -hmm. Less than 200, I think. Yeah, High Point is she, about 150, now, 150. Here's a question. What if needs it faster than being able to save yeah that's my only problem yeah. with that be and exactly. i had i've literally had that situation happen where like i knew somebody who needed a gun like the very next day for home protection mm -hmm. and there wasn't a matter of i can save for this gun or that gun they had to go get what they could get mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i would say get what you can afford that, that you can get most expediently and high points regardless of what people want to get into um, I've been doing this for like seven years. Uh, high points are, in my opinion, decent guns. They're not good looking. They're very bulky, but they work. And then mm -hmm. also high point stands behind those guns. So the first time I bought a high point, I was basically doing these videos. I wanted to see can you what kind of gun can you get for less than 100 bucks? 
that was the whole point of it. And so I was like, okay, let me get a pistol. Let's see what pistol I can get for less than a hundred bucks. I found a high point for less than a hundred bucks at a pawn shop. I think it was, I don't know, like 60, 70 bucks or something like that, that I found a high point. Got that gun, shot it, it worked. You know, I ran into a problem when I try to take it apart to clean it because that's something wrong with my brain. I always got, I always had to like try to clean, <laughs> clean guns, and the springs popped out everywhere. And I actually there was a couple of them that I couldn't find anymore. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, but High Point, I got in touch with them, and they just immediately sent those springs out. You know, and I learned about that, and they stand behind um, what they do. So yeah, man. I mean, if that's what you can get, get that. I still have that gun in my collection, um, and then you can move on from there. You know, you can work your way up. So, to add to that, um, I had a similar situation with. I, I guess I'll just say I had a similar situation with Taurus, mm -hmm. and their customer service was terrible. Mm -hmm. And I told mm -hmm. them I was like, "You guys have a very nice, uh, you know, affordable pistol, but if I can't send new gun owners to you because your customer service is trash, mm -hmm. like." What's, yeah. I can't suggest your gun to people. So the fact that High Point is good like that with their customer service and being, um, I guess, quick to fix the issue, mm -hmm. that's a pretty big thing when it comes to uh, new gun owners. Yeah. 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 I, I think it is. And, you know, there's a level for everyone, right? And um, right. you know what? And the, there's also another thing. Like, it's like with cars. I found this about cars. Some people care about cars and some people don't. But I don't. Like, don't I'm care. one of those people that really, like... It's just not a like thing to me. I don't okay, know. but you need so when you need transportation, it doesn't matter, right? You probably get the most affordable car, most efficient, or whatever. You don't care about the color or a lot, a ton of features, right? When you're getting it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how some people are with guns. And I would rather have that person have a gun than not have one because they're trying to get. Um, I remember one time I went to uh, Sam Andrews. He I do a lot of stuff with him. He makes custom leather holsters. I went there. He was building a holster for me, um, and I and I have Glocks. And there's this guy that came in, and he's like, "Oh, I'm building a holster for Hank." And the guy looked at the thing. And he's like, "This is for a Glock. Oh, that's for poor people." Yeah, I, really, I was like, and I looked at you know, I, I was like, "Listen, dude, when I throw bullets at you with this Glock, you are going." down mm -hmm. <laughs> that the whole Glock. like this is for poor people wow. nonsense or whatever <laughs> is what it is i get it you know so but, 550 dollars is just poor people money i guess yeah. I, I you know <laughs> what yeah this this kind of stuff wow. this this does happen like Rhonda said right there's mm -hmm. gonna be people like that <laughs> but you know i can't believe i said that in front of you um, there's some people, like you said, man, there's dudes, this is what I'm no trying to tell time. you. <laughs> and I'm a little, the guy knew me and everything, but he just couldn't help that little snobbery because he's like a SIG guy. And... I was about to ask, is he a SIG guy? <laughs> yes. Oh, already... oh, that's Bloods and Crips right there. <laughs> yeah, SIG guys, I don't know. So, and then there's like CZ guys and then there's anti-CZ. But I learned a long time ago, there's, you could get very cheap guns, so handguns, you know, a Glock, probably, uh, excuse me, a high point, you could probably buy brand new for around 150 bucks. There's handguns that go up to $10,000 and above that. Oh, yeah. You know, 20000 I remember one time I, there was a company that I've had on the show, um, Cabot Guns. They make these 1911s and they typically start around five grand. And people were complaining to me like, oh, five grand for a 1911. I can't believe it. Really nice guns. I went somewhere and I met this guy that makes 1911s for like the stars, for actors. Like I met him, I was at an event with Steven Seagal or like a barbecue and Steven Seagal was there. And um, this guy makes 1911s for folks like that, right? He said, dude, my 1911 start at like $40,000 and I have to like you to even sell you one. <laughs> wow. So you can all you always wow. will find someone who has more than you, and you always find someone that has less than you. Wait, is this the guy that made it out of like a meteorite? Yeah, that's what I was. Uh, gonna Cabot ask. Guns, Cabot, Cabot Guns. Yeah. They made they did make a 1911, but they're not their 1911s are not like that particular meteorite one was two million dollars or something. But yeah, I saw <laughs> that. That was insane. Yeah, yeah, but there's always you can always just find ridiculously expensive guns in this thing and. 
Don't let anyone right. get you, you know, get it twisted. Let me get this in from Harry's Holsters, who's sponsoring us. He says, people rarely consider a situation beyond their own when recommending guns. Right. So, right. Yeah. Right. That's true. Exactly. Yeah. Let's see. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.